Welcome to The Grow Podcast. I'm Pastor Mike with New Hope Network. We're here to help you take your next step in your relationship with Jesus. I'm so glad you're with us today. What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to The Grow Podcast. My name is David, Pastor Mike. This is episode 57. It is episode, episode 57. 57. Thank you for being here as always. Uh, Did you give me a choice? Yeah, I don't think you're the one who oh, okay. does or does not give right. me choices here. And we have lovely background yep, noises today. They are today. still working. We will uh, let you know when they're done with the roof, but it is not. They're today. getting closer and closer, and so we're yep. excited about it. But yes. just a few they're, weeks away. Uh, they seem to be making great progress. They're an amazing crew. It's been but fun it, to watch. Yeah, so we, got to, we got to have fun. So the other day, it was like 100 and some degrees out there literally that does not sound fun and you know all these guys are up on the roof <clears throat> oh, so yeah. our team brought ice cream and root beer floats and invited them all into the air into the air conditioning and gave them all root beer floats and i think that we're all now their best friends <laughs> Um, they were very appreciative. Until the next day, that it was also 100 degrees, and we didn't have yeah. root beer floats. For Actually, them. the next day it cooled down. After oh, that, that was one. the so, yeah before yeah. it cooled down. But uh, I'm sure they'll want that in other days <laughs> when it's hot. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. fun. Uh, but good. eventually, they'll be done with that, and then you won't hear. Yes. Drilling noises or whatever. I don't even. I don't pretend to know I what just, activity is happening. Yeah. I just I'm thinking why are they I thought they were done with this part make but. sure you check out the video podcast in case they fall through the roof and land Stop on our table it. here and we have Stop a it. third member of the grow no. podcast this week or just some legs dangling from the ceiling <laughs> yeah, this is good. That, they've that already just took covered, a turn they've that already covered this part yeah. of the building this, right this is, so, oh yeah this yeah, is absolutely we'll, safe we won't get we won't get that opportunity and, that, and this part of the building would be a very very long fall when they wouldn't fall all the way though right because they all have their they're all yeah. tethered to stuff up there safety. where they'd be yeah. safety conscious safety people stuff. yep wearing hard hats i haven't got to wear a hard hat since they've been here i'm pretty disappointed about that i thought when i sent you up i put you in hard hats no they didn't have any so i had to just stay by the uh, you know away from yeah. all the work they were doing yep yeah. They were what I've never understood employees. with this whole thing is when we go up on the roof where there's nothing over our head, we have to wear hard hats. <laughs> Someone explain the safety of that one to me. Chicken Little said the sky yeah, is falling. Something. So, but I've just noticed that I've the last two podcasts I've used uh, a, it's really, an a really old, old new, school hope pen. new Hope pen. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that'll be a collector's item someday. Yeah, if you because you're going to see it on eBay someone, this week for someone will collect $500. It. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it'd be worth it. Oh, I just said it'd be a collector's it's item. One of those worthless collector's items. We yeah. all have those. They might they have intrinsic you know, I need to value. stop putting this in our notes because when I write this, I put off top, <clears throat> top after David says welcome, we'll talk about nonsense. And it's getting more nonsensical. I feel I don't feel like any of this was nonsense. It was all <laughs> valuable. If you want, this isn't like lobby level nonsense. We have. That's the truth. <laughs> That's the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what, what are we uh, what are we talking about today, Pastor Mike? Well, we're going to follow up and go a little bit deeper on this weekend's <clears throat> teaching, which was um, it, it was might have been a little bit more in your face than a than little some is fair. a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> at least a little. Uh, was we talked about how what the early church considered normal, we often have turned into something optional. Mm -hmm. And as, you know, we want to argue with that, we want to um, um, kind of push back on that. Like I talked, the story I told about sledding, I want, you know, as, you know, sixth, seventh grade young man, I wanted to argue with my dad about the fact that I thought our sledding hill was perfectly safe and, you know, bloodied and bruised later, he was probably right, but. That just means um, it was a good sledding hill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. Um, but uh, how often we make optional what God said, if you want to live a life where you experience what I promised, the power in your life, these mm -hmm. things should be normal in your life. Yeah. So wh where are we going to go with that today? What's the, how are we diving deeper into that? Well, <clears throat> the, the challenge with, with answering the question and, and where have we seen, where we've seen us making it optional it, it's, it's, it's kind of a challenge to it. It's twofold. One, to answer it in a non-condemning way because it can sound very <laughs> condemning. Sure. 
you're considering optional what God said would be normal. It was kind of a point your finger. But we all struggle with this. Yep. You know, we all struggle with this. And I think the second part of this is is related to it too, is to not answer it in a personal pet peeve way. Sure, just the, the thing that yeah. really bothers you. We all you. have <laughs> something about, you know, I've watched you do that and yeah. you really need to live, you know, differently, which is where the, you know, the condemning comes in. Yep. And one of the reasons why a lot of us um, get, uh, we don't take this as seriously is because so often we get caught in the someone, you know, some person, I guess the, the name we use these days is some Karen, you know, um, which I know a lot of good Karen, so that really bothers <laughs> me. Um, you know, wants to point the finger and say, you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to. And we're all going, let's talk about you, you know. But let's just talk about maybe the easiest one because we talked about, uh, you know, the things that the early church considered normal. Teaching, gathering, worship, generosity, prayer. So right now um, you're going to condemn us about your personal pet peeve? or Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it's... Um, Especially these days, I think all of us struggle with um, endurance when it comes to gathering. Yeah. You know, um, either being intentional about friendships, intentional about being um, connected, whether we're at an in-person gathering mm -hmm. or digital gathering. Yeah. And honestly, it's harder digital gather. It it should be easier, right? Because mm -hmm. it's digital. But it's harder because we aren't used to gathering digitally, right. where it's easier for us to be more disconnected. For sure. Um, and we've taught us, and we live in a world that's taught us to be consumers. So mm -hmm. we treat gathering yeah. like the reason we've turned it into an option um, is because we look at it like we look with everything else. We we kind of do this little um, mental math. Well, is it giving me this? Is it giving me this? Oh, this is giving me this. I need to choose this this weekend. If I don't do this, then this will happen. And, you know, and we say we miss a gathering. What does it really cost us? Yeah. Well, and, and at first, it doesn't really cost us. Someone said recent, recently, you know, when you begin to miss church, pretty soon you won't miss church. Mm -hmm. And I think when we begin to drift away, we don't even realize what we're missing. Yeah. And we go, oh, I'm, I'm okay. And we, I mean, we all ex you know. just experienced months and years of yeah. you know, where we were, were you know, it's required like, to be. And, and for some of us, it's like, you know, the sky didn't fall. Right. You know, the world didn't yep. end. Um, I, I still think I'm a Christian, um, but yeah. it's a little bit. And we touched on it on, on last week's podcast and used a little bit of the, you know, the spiritual discipline illustration of, you know, there are some things that when we don't do them, we don't necessarily miss them. But when we do do them, like yeah. eating healthy, that's horrible. None of us, you know, really want to eat healthy. <laughs> but when you do it, you go, oh, I can live differently now, mm -hmm. you know, when I work out as a basketball coach, because I always have to bring in a coaching illustration, right? You know, when... Check, we have our weekly yeah, coaching when, illustration. <laughs> when, as, yeah. as a... As a member of the team you know when i'm engaged in certain drills and certain i i i get better you mm -hmm. know and you would assume that as a coach you want them to do that but not not doing it i can still play a, a game of, well people other than me <laughs> can play you know a pickup game at yeah at you know whatever um but it's just easy to kind of fake gather and gathering mm. isn't about consuming gathering is about engaging fake um, fake gathering reminds me of a conversation we had last week about chapel college chapels scan and scram oh we had that a couple weeks ago <laughs> yeah. actually yeah you just just a private yeah. conversation oh, yeah. Mike and I had where we yeah uh, oh yeah that's what at, it is at Christian colleges uh there's often required chapel and uh, sometimes people they they have fun names for this, so you have to scan because you you attended a chapel I, with your yep, son, yeah, and they have to scan on their way in and then again on their way yeah, out to make sure to, they actually to make stayed. sure they stayed. Yeah, because I I was in college when at least my college uh -oh, my, confession from my, David time. Well, no, my freshman year they didn't have the scanning technology. Mm -hmm. It was just like a, an actual an actual human being like marking your name off. So we called it slash and dash where someone would slash your name and you would leave. And then they added the cards, but we didn't, they didn't, 
you know, they hadn't yeah. adopted the people are just going to scan and leave yeah. theory yet, so people could just scan and they leave. Were but now, apparently, yeah, they, in yeah, your they, integrity. they trusted Christian college students yeah. back then. But now, apparently, they scan in and out to make yeah. sure they stay. But that, when you said fake gathering, that made me think yeah. of that. Just scan in and, yeah. and bounce. <laughs> and, and, and here's some of what we do with this. And I get why, man, I do this too, because we're, we're so oriented this way with any of these things, you know, and I don't just want to pick on gathering. It's just the easiest one for mm-hmm. us to pick on any of these things um, is we treat these things like things that we have to, it's like, you know, we have this calendar, kind of the visual. We have this calendar with all these empty slots. And it's like, okay, I only have so many slots. So I've got to put this one in here. But if I put this one in this slot on Monday morning at 9 a.m., then this one, where does this one go? So some things are going to be left off the calendar. So, you know, you, you know. Just all over the place. Yeah, it's, it's all over the place. Um, instead of weaving them into weaving what's normal into the life we're already living. And we do this all the time. I mean, say with friendship, friendship is both and. Friends, friendship is something that we go, hey, Thursday night is going to be table game night in our house. So we schedule it, right? Mm-hmm. But friendship is also something we just weave in. You know, we during the day, we while we're doing other things, we, we text a friend. Sure. We, you know, yeah. So we weave into this. And that's the mental shift. Hmm. I think we need to work on. It's both something that we need to make a priority on our calendar, but also these things are things that we need to weave into the life we're living. Hmm. And I touched on this on, on the weekend, but you know, we tend to go, well, it was easier for them 2,000 years ago. Actually, <laughs> it was pr- for a lot of them, it was probably harder than us. Yeah. I think for a lot of us, we have more control over our schedule than that. Remember, some of them in the early church were slaves. Mm-hmm. One, I mean, we don't live in that world today, praise Jesus, right? Um, at least in our not, part of the yeah, world. Yeah, not in the United States. Yeah. In the United States. Um, it's not like they had control over their work schedule. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sorry, I can't work today. I'm going to church. <laughs> you know? So for them to yeah. get up and gather together, they might get up at 3 in the morning, mm-hmm. you know, at 4 in the morning. But they also wove prayer and teaching even while they were doing stuff yeah. throughout the day. And we do it with food. You know, we have mm-hmm. maybe a set aside lunchtime, but it's just some of what we do. We do this with information gathering. You know, how often are, while you're doing something else, are you also online? Sure. You know, so we do this kind of thing. So I, what I want to help us with is to realize this is both and. This needs to be because the natural drift of our life is to not make this a priority and to yeah. give other things a priority. And we could get you know, more specific because different ones of us put this in different ways. But to also help us realize we can weave this into mm-hmm. the fabric of our calendar that we're already doing. So let's let's go into that. How do we, Yeah. Let's what, talk what are like practical ways that we can, you know, accomplish yeah. that? Let's, let's walk through some of these. So the first thing in Acts chapter 2 it talks about is how they were devoted to teaching. Mm-hmm. And for them, 2,000 years ago, it said they gathered, and it says that in Acts 2, it says they gathered in the temple courts every day. Why? Because it was the only place they could get teaching. Sure. You know, later on as the church spread, there were parts of the city. You know, you read about the Apostle Paul visiting, visiting different places. It was normal in cities, even before Christianity came to cities, for there to be places you would go for friendship connection and teaching Mm -hmm. a lot of times it was city gates a lot of times it was the city squares you know the roman and greek centrals uh places um the temples for the temple in the jerusalem area is kind of like the water cooler you know Mm -hmm. for us you know that's where they go yeah um so the question is you know for us where do we gather and we gather multiple places right you know we so Think about weaving teaching into the places where you're already doing life. How about while you're driving? You know, if you're a parent and you have little kids in, you know, there's there's great shows um, that you can find, you can download that weave that teaching in. Adventures and Odyssey. Adventures Check and Odyssey out. is still I will, around. I will plug Adventures and Odyssey yeah. whenever. Veggie Tales is another yep. one, and there's others. <clears throat> when you're at home, um, you know, have there's audiobooks and podcasts and YouTube Mm -hmm. podcasts. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Listen to the girl Um, podcast. When you wind down at night, you know, what do you listen to? Mm -hmm. Um, 
movies and shows. I talked this weekend about uh, uh, a resource that we have at New Hope. And if you're part of New Hope, you have this resource. It's Right Now Media. Mm -hmm. yep. You can actually email us and uh, we'll give you a link. And because our giving, uh, all of us together, supports this. And so we're able to give this back. And it's videos and Bible studies. And a lot of our small groups use this. Yep. And it's stuff for kids, stuff for adults. Yep. There's shows, all those kinds of things. But just weaving teaching into your life. And here's mm -hmm. one thing I would add to that. Like for me growing up, my parents did this so well. We had, we got, we had teaching from all kinds of sources. Um, but to protect against consumerism here, yeah. make sure that one of your primary sources is the same, is the place you're connected to, is the mm -hmm. place you're connected to. Um, we tend to want to in consumerism go, I'm going to go to this church for this, I'm going right. to go to this church for this, especially if we're digitally connecting and this yeah. church for this. Because uh, we'll talk about gathering. Gathering with the same people matters. Hmm. It really, really yeah, matters. Um, and the main reason it matters is because there's going to be a time when you won't get along. <laughs> and that will be, you know, Proverbs says, as iron sharpens iron, so one, one of us sharpens another person. When sparks fly, that's when sharpening happens. But for most of us, when sparks fly, what do we do? We go to another, yeah. you know, or to another. I'm just going to avoid them for a while. But the times when we don't get along or the times when people are driving us nuts, I think what you said might have been on the last podcast, can I love someone without liking them? You <laughs> yeah, know? Yeah, that was last week. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, especially if you join us online, don't just watch, but engage with yeah. others. There's stuff yeah. that other people will catch that you won't catch and process with others. Um and the best, the best time for you to gather is when it's inconvenient. <laughs> Why is that? Because it, it, it's far more intentional. Sure. Yeah. And it's when we're intentional that we'll get mm. the most out of it. Yeah. When it's just something we do, it's like, all right, done. All right, where are we going for lunch today? Right. You know, and we're done and we move on. Um, and, and I just want to uh, throw something in here that... Um, uh, a guy, a gentleman who's kind of a, a coach and distant mentor of mine has said, um, he said, and is talking to us as parents, our kids <coughs> will adapt what we believe, what we th call our boundaries, and they'll turn them into their values. So uh, I, I'm going to touch on this, and this is, um, I want to be, uh, I, I want to do this as grace filled as we can. So, um, for us, when our kids were involved in all kinds of activities as they were growing up, particularly middle school, high school, activities more and more and more don't care about church time, about spiritual yeah, time, and all sure. those kinds of things. And we live in a culture that says they have to be involved in it because why? Because they have to reach their potential. They have to, have to, have to, have to, have to. And I get it. I mean, we felt that pressure too. And so what we would say is, okay, this is a boundary. In other words, this isn't who we are. This is kind of a boundary. We're going to do this activity now in place of something that probably should be normal in our life, in place of gathering. Mm -hmm. But this isn't the way we're going to live. But what happens more often than not is what we as a parent call a boundary, which is a, in this case, a temporary, that this isn't a value. Yeah. Our kids will experience it as a, value and so what happens young adults are leaving the church in droves when they get away from home even though they've grown up maybe even christian home or homeschool mm -hmm. you know or christian education because and i don't, i want to be again grace filled this is just a coaching moment for us we as parents have have said you know would you need to be involved in this, this, and this? So they get away from home and it's not like they go i'm turning their back on god but sunday morning comes around, oh i have homework Right, and and the value in their mind was there's something that I can that I can treat as an option right now, mm -hmm. and after a while they'll begin to drift and not even realize this happened, yeah. and then they don't miss God. Hmm. And why do I need God? Worship. We talked about gathering, but you can surround yourself with worship throughout the day. 
Yeah. You know, everywhere you go. YouTube.com slash New Hope Here. Yeah. Go to the worship. You say, so I need to li- do I need to listen to worship songs every day, all day long, every day? No, I don't. <laughs> you know, yeah. we, I've got, I had, you know, some, I had um, another playlist playing earlier today. But especially, you know, several times a day, I'll just make sure I'm, yeah. I've fed my heart in this prayer. Mm-hmm. We talked about prayer a couple weeks ago. Engage in that conversation w- throughout your day. You can weave this into your life. Do you, do you need to be intentional about it? Yeah. Yeah. Generosity, the same thing. And we aren't just talking financial generosity, although we need to make that a non-option for right. us. Tithing should be non-optional for us, not because it's a legalistic thing, but as God says, if you want me to bless you, you need to put me first. And there's a lot of things. Um, I mean, there's there are some things that God will not, cannot do. We say he's he's huge. You know, he's he's God. One of the things God cannot do is be second. So if yeah. we're putting him second. He, his power cannot fully work in our life. It's not proving himself to us. It's just putting ourselves, like we talked about Sunday, under that umbrella. Mm. But what about serving? Yeah. If you want God's power at work in your life, why aren't you using the spiritual gift that he gave you? He empowered you. Mm-hmm. And if you aren't using it, you're missing, missing out on that moment. So you can weave this into your life, into yeah. your time. That's good, Pastor Mike. So yeah. if I, uh, every time you say weave, it just makes me think of underwater basket weaving, yeah, which was always the joke class for, you know, yeah. a football player I, who's I've trying to get to his grades I've tried to think of another, <laughs> another verb. But, so that's been distracting you know, me during yeah. this podcast. But no, that's the, it's yeah. the right verb. And I think, yeah, I think that can be, I mean, that's the goal. But what, you know, it, I feel like sometimes it can be discouraging to be okay, I, you know, today, you know, this week, I want to really want to weave worship into my daily life, or I want to weave prayer in, and then I look back at the end of the week, and I'm like, well, Monday, I nailed it, and then mm-hmm. it just drifted as the week yeah. went on, and you know, how what would you say to someone who's, you know, maybe trying to do this, or they want to try to do it, but they're they're discouraged or, or anything like that? I think just pick up where you left off, hmm. you know, pick up where you left off. John Ortberg is, you know, one of the people I've studied on s- spiritual formation over the years. And uh, he talks like with with journaling, not that, you Mm -hmm. know, journaling is a great discipline, not something you have to do. It's for different ones of us. He said, keep two. Because inevitably you're going to miss a day or two and then go, oh, and you open it back up and you see the day you missed. Start in the other one so you don't feel so bad. (laughs) You know, I like that. Uh, But just just two. So and think about with prayer, if prayer is a conversation, you know, and like with you and I in our friendship, um, it's not like we go, all right. Our conversation's over. We'll meet again at 9 a.m. on <laughs> sure. Thursday morning. We just pick up where we left off, or yeah. we'll go on to another touch. Pick up where you left off. But the point is, make sure you examine, especially these five things that we talk about. So teaching, gathering, um, teaching, gathering, worship, prayer, generosity. Mm-hmm. These should be a normal part of the fabric of your life. Mm-hmm. I have a, a friend of friend of mine who is a, a new hoper. She actually teaches family consumer sciences at the at the local high school here in Williston, and she's a quilter, so she she mm-hmm. makes quilts. And the way I kind of think of it is, you know, with a quilt, you can like make so there's this section, there's this section, there's this, you know, so each one is a different section. But what holds it all together? There's a thread that holds all of this together. Mm-hmm. These five things are the thread, not the components mm-hmm. that hold everything together. And if you want to experience God's power in your life, you need it. You need the thread to hold it all yeah. together. What's our next step for this week? I think this is a reflection week. Yeah. Where have I treated these things as optional? Yeah. And if you've examined it, just again, don't just say, "All right, I'm never gonna miss this again." Just take a next step. So, yeah. you know, if I've treated prayer as optional today, I'm just going to work on spending a little bit more time in conversation with God than I did yesterday. Mm-hmm. And the next day, a little bit more time, you know. I'm gathering. How am I going to work on every week, at least twice, I would say, somehow, some way, set yourself a goal to try and gather with some other believers, mm-hmm. preferably you know, in a weekend kind of worship experience online or whatever. But I know 
for some of our work schedules. For some of you who work in the oil field, mm -hmm. every week that way is right. very, very difficult. Yep. But how can you do it? Sure. Um, and you know, you can throw out all kinds of ideas. So you know, I picked on parents who, you know, their kids are involved in all kinds of activities. Some parents, your your kids are in a traveling team. There are other parents who are there with you too, or in the same boat. Mm -hmm. What if you picked a time and said, "Hey, why don't why don't we join in and worship together?" And you get you go to the hotel lobby and ask permission yeah. to put New Hope here up on it and and join in together. You say, yeah. "Well, not all of them are believers." Awesome, even better. <laughs> you know, yeah. And not just you know <clears throat> your family, but do you know those things? Same thing at work. Invite some other people yeah. to do that at work. As you do that, yeah. whatever you can do to weave these things into the fabric of your yeah. life. Well, I think, I think you you were, you know, you were very careful. You know, you didn't want to be condemning or anything, which I appreciate. I probably wouldn't have been as as uh, gracious as you. Um, but like in my life, you know, like that was. I grew up as a pastor's kid, so it's a yeah. little, you know, everybody expects there to be a yeah. standard of, you know, the weekend gatherings, Wednesday yeah. nights. Those are priorities. <clears throat> um, but I can see, you know, you, you were talking about how our kid, how our kids will like find our, take our boundaries and make them their values. And yeah. even for me, when I got to college, it's, it was so easy to just not like, well, it's Sunday morning. Like, I don't, you know, I can, I, yeah. you know, especially I was at a Christian college. So I was like, well, I was at chapel twice yep. this week. So why do I need it again? Yep. And then you get out of the habit. And I had so many friends get out of that habit in college and then college ended. They weren't at the Christian college anymore. And they haven't probably haven't been back to church since other than when they go home to see their parents. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, for like, for me, I, I couldn't miss a Sunday more. You know, I had church on Sunday morning was a requirement, even though I had sports going on, mm -hmm. but I'm, I, you know, I still had the opportunity to play college sports and I've been a, you know, professional basketball coach, not coaching professionals, mm -hmm. but I, I've at, been being paid to coach basketball mm -hmm. for the last 14, 15 years mm -hmm. of my life. I mean, you know, my, my career didn't end because I missed a baseball game or a basketball game right. for, for Sunday morning, but I did, it did help reorient my priorities where as an adult, it, that became a, that's still a priority for me over everything yeah. else in my life. And, um, and so I've just, I've really seen that. So I, I would encourage those parents whose kids are in all those activities, which they are And pa pastor Mike wasn't joking. I mean, your, both of your kids were in a ton of activities. They were both extremely talented in music and, and acting and drama all the stuff I wasn't talented in at all and uh but you're still able to foster those things and still teach them you mm -hmm. know prioritizing the important there are some things that are more important than yeah. than basketball and, and what skill is going to be more important <clears throat> what discipline is going to be more important for them as a 30 40 50 year old you know basketball and I'll pick on basketball, hockey, drama, <laughs> theater, you know, whatever it might be. Yep. Those are awesome additions to life. Yep. But what's going to help them survive in life? Mm, yeah. Um, and, yeah, we could we could go deep we on could, that. We could have a long podcast, my, but we won't. Some of my we'll personal <laughs> even pet peeves there. But, you know. <laughs> yeah, but we won't get into those. But, you yeah, know, thank you for that, Pastor Mike. I, I really appreciate it. The weekend teaching was great, and so I was, I was looking forward to kind of jumping more into this one and especially trying to look at it into that context that you were talking about where these weren't optional for the yeah. early church the people you know the the people who were the foundation of the church when it was first starting these were these were normal mm -hmm. and so trying to get ourselves back to to looking at them that way is important so we'll all make sure we take that next step this week thank you again everybody for joining us <clears throat> we always appreciate uh, any feedback you have so leave a comment like the video if you're watching on youtube anything like that make sure you subscribe so you um get the uh, uh notifications when the new episodes go up and if you subscribe on youtube you'll get notified when new worship songs go up the weekend messages any like special videos we have things like that so uh, make sure you do that and we will see you next time